Hey guys, welcome back, BDCKR here, and let's just jump right into the Q&As. The first one comes from Jdev Deshpande, and they say, Hey guys, do you think you could do your weekly Q&A videos right after challenges, or weekly seasons, or Survivor gear sets change, instead of right before them, like this one? I don't open up Injustice app very often to see what's going on, but I do get notifications for your videos, so if you timed your videos right after things have happened on the app, they would be really hard to miss. Yes, I know you do videos right after uh, app updates. It would be great if you just did that with weekly, fortnightly challenges too. Changes. Changes, sorry. I know I could be very wrong here. You probably do upload videos right after new challenges slash survivor gear sets slash online season start, but I just haven't noticed it. I'm happy to be corrected. Okay, so if you've been used to watching us for a while, you'll notice a few big changes starting with our thumbnails. And you might have noticed last week we did an update on the weekly stuff motivated mainly because the promotion glitch was working so that was our excuse for changing uh our sort of process so we're going to experiment the next little bit with splitting up the update and the q a portion of our videos and originally our real life commitments kept us from doing this but now that we've got a different uh workflow for our filming we're going to give this a try and see if it's worth the trouble yeah by the very nature of the updates they'll be shorter and probably not have as much room for commentary, but the Q&As shouldn't change too much, like today's. Yeah, and so we've changed our naming scheme a little bit too. The updates are going to be named based off of date, and then these are going to be now named based off of number, which is why we've started Season 2, just to help us keep track of the actual naming conventions. But yeah, neither of us wanted to go back and count the number of Q&As we've had so far, so that we could start... You know, it's like numbering of a comic book. We're going to start a whole new series. And this yeah. is number one. Welcome to season two. So hopefully the updates will be a little bit more useful to people. Timely. Yeah, and the Q&As will, will be able to be a lot more Q&A packed. Mm -hmm. uh, for, so hopefully that'll be good for everybody. But let us know what you think about that in the comments for sure. The next question comes from DR3 Gaming or Dre Gaming. It's hard to tell, you know. Mm -hmm elite speak but they say why do you put the date of the q and a in the title just put the number we know the date all right yeah so perfect since we're splitting q and a's and updates uh q and a's no longer need to be dated and that's why you see we are this is the inaugural episode of season two yeah and so from now on we will be using that number scheme we'll be using the other person's idea for splitting up the videos yeah. and making them more timely here's the thing a lot of the information is timeless a lot of the information that we we go over people end up asking us again and i, I i'd always originally thought that it would be a good way to organize it by dating it but it also seems like uh, people are avoiding it when they see a date that's way too old yeah it's because we always kind of used it like almost like an archive for information because we were answering specific questions about right. the game yep but I guess this works probably about as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, our next question comes from Jazzdive Santu, and they say, I always use your glitches as my reference point. All other glitches worked for me except this one, and this is the promotion glitch video. Can you actually explain how to do this glitch again? This glitch is the only glitch I'm unable to do, which sort of sucks, man. Anyways, you deserve more credit than you do for your consistent dedication and uploads for this game. By the way, my device is S7 Edge Android. All right, so when this comment originally appeared, we included a link to the instructional video. But I, I think there's a few points that bear repeating. Um, so a lot of people always ask whether the promotion glitch is still working. And it's a funny question because the answer depends a lot on how you define working, mm -hmm. right? Um, so there's two necessary conditions. The challenge has to be in the first slot on the main page. Um, and it, there has to be a pop-up that takes you directly to the store. And the pop-up is from the server side so it's not something you have control over and it usually only appears once so the glitch takes that in count and part of the glitch is to set everything up again so that it shows up one more time yeah so every single time those conditions are present you can do the glitch and if those conditions aren't present you cannot do the glitch mm -hmm. um when it was first possible the right conditions could last for days and the but the last time the conditions were there they only last for a few hours and it almost seems like they're doing that on purpose yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I think there's probably a little bit of intent there. Yeah, so uh, I guess you can say whenever the conditions aren't present, the glitch isn't working. And, and you are technically correct, but it, 
kind of misses a point, and I, it feels a little bit misleading to anybody who sees it and goes, oh, the glitch isn't working. Right, because, the main, yeah, the main point is that the instructional video explains in step-by-step -step detail not only how to perform the glitch, but how to recognize when the necessary conditions are there. Yeah, so the glitch isn't usable, but it is still working. Like, all the principles are the same, all the execution is the same, the conditions just aren't right. Yeah, if you wanted to wait for us to record a new video each time the conditions are right, you know, you're, you're kind of screwed, because there's a good chance that by the time we can post anything, the necessary conditions will be gone again. Yeah, so be prepared, learn how to do it ahead of time, and also learn how to recognize the next opportunity, because there's a good chance that it won't last very long, and I think that's probably the best way to do it, is to right. make sure you, you always know, always have a kind of short, quick way to refresh yourself if you right. don't, and that you can you can recognize it for yourself, or the, the other way is to turn notifications on for our channel so that when it comes up, if you're on a device that, that will receive those notifications yeah. uh, a lot, then you'll then you'll get that hopefully in time. But there is a certain amount of, like, of latency, usually like no way there's less than half an hour Cause, latency. Because we can do a quick update letting you know it's working, but to film it again and do the instructions again takes a lot longer. Yeah. So there's a good chance we'd be able to do an update like we did last time to let you guys know. Mm-hmm. Okay, our next question is from The Lost, and this is in regards to the challenge reset video. And they say, I went through testing and items, and this glitch, I think, is what causes people to lose all their items, is the fact that they don't go onto online battle. Okay, so this gives us an opportunity to actually talk about the challenge reset glitches, which is one of our sort of best glitches, simply because it's been around for so long, it was actually how we got started. Yeah, and it's very reliable. Right. So first, uh, that it's safest of glitches. Resetting really should have zero risk of account suspension or losing items. But it again, it depends on how much you end up accumulating because if you accumulate too much power credits, which is hard to do just by grinding the challenge reset, you're, 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 you risk account suspension. But doing it inherently is not a danger. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you talk about uh, losing your items, so unless you're uninstalling and reinstalling or deleting app data, losing data actually happens as a result of the server save getting corrupted. Begin. So sure, if you're uninstalling, reinstalling, deleting app data, you can recover progress by syncing the server save with your WBID, but what's less common and on the flip side also more serious is if injustice crashes while your device is trying to sync with the server, that, that, that will actually erase all progress. And in that case, totally different solution, right? So instead of logging your WBID, that's what actually removes your data. The key is use an alternative backup to recover. So that alternative backup could be a third-party app like Helium, which we like. Yeah. Doesn't require rooting. Uh, Titanium, which is also popular, which does require rooting. Or if you're on Android, you can use Google Play Cloud. And I think the bottom line is it's a mistake to completely rely on the Warner Brothers servers. Yeah, because especially when it's a game that you can put hundreds of hours into, you, you never want to rely on just one thing, especially when that one thing is known to have a very small but very real chance of losing data. Right, right, right. By no fault of your own. Even if you do everything perfectly otherwise, there's still the, the tiniest sliver of a chance. And and if it's worth hundreds of hours to play, it's worth uh, an hour or two to, to get a consistent backup that you can use for the rest of the time that you're playing. Mm -hmm. Anyways, our next and final question comes from Locutus442, and this is on the Survivor Completion video. And they say, after watching this, I was wondering how an All Black is Night team, specifically Batman, Hawk Girl, and Martian Manhunter, would do in Survivor mode, and how would you gear them? And, alright, so the first part really is, I'm, I'm going to sort of answer what I believe is the intent behind the question, not answering the question directly first. I don't think that's going to be really good because when you get to the really high levels, when they have that much health, in order to and, and damage actually, in order to avoid getting knocked out by just one combo, you you really have to finish things quick. You need to have not only a really big damage dealer, which in your case the scenario that you've set for us would probably be Blackest Night Batman, but you'd also need to be able to do it so fast, and that's where Raven is critical because oh yeah, I, I don't know if. There's another way to take out guys, a team with literally millions of health and not worry about getting hit with a special and not worry about 
missing a juggle so that they end up doing a combo on you. That's true, because you can take somebody down to less than 20% of their health uh, almost definitely once. If you're doing it successfully, you have to do it once. Right, and if you were watching that Survivor video where we completed it, there's one fight where we did it twice with Raven. Yeah. And Reverse Flash still ended up doing one and a half million worth of damage. Yeah, and also I think there was a fight too where the, the it triggered twice on the same guy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's just ridiculous. So it's I, I wouldn't suggest it unless you've got a lot of time on your hands. And I guess as a grinding game, it means that most people don't have a lot of time because what you really need to do is... But to me... I want to get as much of the gears and as many of the characters as possible and many credits. And getting past maybe fight eight or nine isn't an efficient way to do it, at least on Survivor. Yeah, so I think the two real kind of requirements are Soul Taker Sword to get the damage enough to actually be able to kill people once you started killing people. And you almost need Raven to get that first kind of pick yeah. to get that first I mean, kill. People were doing it before Soul Taker Sword. Yeah. But they were also maybe spending a bit more time on it too. Because it does take more time. I remember um, who. I can't remember. I, 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 I happened to watch a video of somebody who did uh, Complete Survivor, but they had to speed it up to like four times, and it was still like almost 20 minute long video. Yeah, so that's that's like an hour, more than an hour. Yeah, because listen, Reverse Flash still works even with lower damage, but just takes so much longer, and then you have to be perfect for, <laughs> for like not make a mistake. Um, so, I mean, to answer your actual question, if you're going to really make a go at it, I'd love to see it. But it seems like the best technique would be to make uh, Martian Manhunter your tank with the possibility of um, healing himself, maybe with the Lex Core gear like that glitch that we we uh, demonstrated. Yeah. Blackest Knight um, uh, Batman should be your main damage dealer because he's got just the highest potential anyways to start with. And um, Hawk Girl is interesting. I'm not sure what I'd do with her. Maybe make her a special specialist so that you, if you don't bring her out, she builds up bars of power and you can drop her in. And so maybe you do, do use some gears so you get some better effects or more damage out of her specials. I wouldn't suggest it though. I mean, it's not something that I want to try. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's the end of our questions. But what I actually wanted to talk about was uh, Suicide Squad a little bit. Yeah, so we just saw the movie. We won't have, I guess, anything showing over this. It'll just be our rambling but uh what did you think of the movie okay so i guess apologies to maybe people who were expecting us to watch it earlier it did take us a while to get around to it um i i really wanted to like it and there were some set pieces there's some scenes that were spectacular yeah. and in a subtle way like the first time we saw um chloe savini i don't know how to pronounce her name the uh, june moon the doctor who changes oh, yeah. into the enchantress there was a, where her the hand reaches oh, out and curls up and then turns over and then all of a sudden she's I, yeah I don't know yeah. that it wasn't really like fireworks spectacular but it was so that to me that was beautiful there were a lot of scenes like that that I loved I think I liked a lot of the individual moments a lot but the problem was I liked a lot of the individual moments each independently more than I liked the movie as a whole yeah that's see this is what killed me I, I we we talked a little bit uh, you know off off video about how. Um, in a lot of ways, there there's more than a superficial resemblance to the Avengers, right? Uh, Guardians As, of the Galaxy. Or that too. Yeah. But how when you focus so much on different characters, then it makes it harder to care about them individually. So when you have a couple focuses. Oh, it, yeah. Okay. And w it would have been a better payoff, I think. And there would have been a more of an emotional buy-in if we knew these characters already or they spent more time with the individual characters telling their stories. Yeah, like... The prequel movies, that's what we were talking about right. for the Avengers. So Iron Man, I think, came out before. I think Captain America did too. And maybe Thor before the Avengers movie came out. Yeah, and so people said they did uh, too much stuff in Age of Ultron. But I think that movie wouldn't have even worked at all if there hadn't been so many movies about all the characters before. If there hadn't right. already been a bunch of Iron Man movies and a bunch of... Uh, even an Avengers movie beforehand. So there was a bunch of kind of character buildup for everybody. And then they did a ton of stuff... But all of it had a little bit more meaning because of all the stuff that had come yeah. before it. So I think I would have liked to have seen a Harley Quinn movie first. Or maybe a Deadshot movie first. Yeah, and, and I think I, I probably would have enjoyed more a standalone Harley Quinn or a standalone Deadshot movie than I necessarily did Suicide Squad. Yeah, so there were a few moments in the movie where you think, where you're looking, watching and you think, okay, so that, that was meant to be a payoff. But without that, that emotional investment, 
it does it doesn't pay off the same way. Yeah. So a good example of actually a writer who does it perfectly to me would be Guy Gabriel K, which we can get into maybe in one of our unboxings a little bit. But he does yeah. those perfect moments where just stuff comes together and you think, oh my God, like, I, I don't know how to say it, but it feels like that it, these huge emotional payoffs that make it worth every single moment leading up to it. And I think we are being critical. I think overall it was a, it was a pretty good movie. Mm -hmm. I wanted to like it more than I did, which isn't to say that I didn't like it. Yeah. I just thought it wasn't, it wasn't great. And I was really hoping for a lot more from it. But it kind of followed in the footsteps of the previous DC movies I've seen, which is to say, not great, just okay. Mm -hmm. Anyways, that was our Q and A and a mini review of Suicide Squad. Thank yeah, you... uh, maybe a few a few months late, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Komoda.